Hey there, today we're gonna harvest an armload of zinnias from my pollinator garden. It's gonna be so much fun. Welcome to the Gardenary channel, garden plus ordinary equals gardenary. So be sure to stick around for inspiration to make gardening an ordinary part of your everyday life too. My name is Nicole Burke. I'm the owner and founder of Rooted Garden in Houston, Texas and Gardenary Incorporated and author of Kitchen Garden Revival. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're gonna to talk about zinnias and I'm just gonna walk you through my pollinator garden and we're gonna cut a bunch of beautiful flowers. Sound fun? So I wanna show you the uh, varieties that I planted in this pollinator bed. Now, last year I wanted to go with a white theme and I only planted, uh, they were called polar bear zinnias from Baker Creek Seeds. Now they were beautiful and I definitely had the white vibe happening, but what happened is I ended up with all these cabbage moths in this bed. So little did I know that white flowers actually attract cabbage moths more than colorful flowers do. So this year I went the exact opposite direction and went a little wild with all different kinds of colors. And uh, I do still have cabbage moths, but they're not hanging out here. They're inside my cabbage. <laughs> so, uh, oops, I just did something to my zinnia bloom. So, um, so here are the varieties that I planted. The first is called Northern Lights Blend. This is from, all three are from Botanical Interests which I love their seeds. So these say they are um, 24 to 36 inches tall, so two to three feet tall, a visual feast of color in fresh shades of pink, purple, and burgundy, impressive, long lasting in arrangements and bouquets. So I don't know about you, but I have found that zinnias don't necessarily last indoors that long. Um, so I was impressed with the idea that they might last longer in a vase. The second kind I did is called California Giants. So these are two to four feet tall. So instead of just going up to three feet, they go to four. Bold, beautiful four to six inch flowers in a rainbow of brilliant colors that last a very long time in the vase. And then this one, I kind of ripped this seed. I was getting excited, I guess, about planting my seeds and I ripped this one, but these are just called cut and come again. And these are actually only one and a half to two and a half feet tall, um, but it says it attracts butterflies in search of sweet summer nectar. So I really just, once I covered my pollinator garden area with compost, I just came out and really just kind of tossed these seeds. You can see what they look like. So I just tossed these dried seeds um, in rows. So you can see I have a little bit of a row action here. I've got basically two rows um, on each side of the pollinator garden. All right, enough about the planting, let's get to harvesting. So when I come out to harvest my zinnias, I love to bring my needle nose pruners. This allows me to get right to the spot of the flower where I wanna harvest. And then I do try to bring out a vase of water as well because these will start to wilt in the garden um, if I'm just like, as I'm going around harvesting. So you wanna put them in water pretty quickly. This is for our longer stems and then I have a little jar of water for the shorter stems. All right, enough about all the prep work, let's get to harvesting. All right, so I'm gonna start with the longer blooms first. I'm gonna put all those together and then I actually do have probably majority smaller blooms. I've been coming in here and harvesting once every five to six days. Uh, so I just did a big harvest last week. So this is what's come back after that time. Now I was just about to harvest this red flower and noticed um, Mr. Japanese beetle here. So I will say if there is pest pressure that I've had on these plants, it's been from these guys. I don't know why it is, but they love eating my zinnias. They love zinnias and cone flowers. So um, the proper way to get rid of these guys, he's gonna try to get out of my hand. <laughs> the proper way to get rid of these guys is to put them in soapy water, but um, I don't have any soapy water. So I'm just gonna stomp on him. So I hope you're not offended, but um, they will literally destroy, they'll destroy your zinnia patch. So I showed this on Instagram stories and my friend was like, oh, when you squish them, it puts off a smell that attracts more Japanese beetles. So I don't know, I just chance it because I don't want that guy on my pretty little flower. So I've just cut it right here at the node where I'm gonna get another bloom right after. So you never wanna cut 
um, you never want to cut this whole thing all the way down here because then we lose an extra bloom. So isn't that pretty? Now you can leave the leaves on if you want to, or you could literally go just straight stem. I personally prefer just having a straight stem. I'm gonna cut it once more um, there at the angle to give it a fresh good start in the vase. And then I'm just gonna put it down in there. So this is a smaller bloom, so we'll come back to this one. Um, and we're gonna step back to some of the other blooms as well. So this one, let's see. We'll cut here again at the node so that we get two more blooms to come. I'm just gonna strip off the leaves, boom, boom, and pop it in the vase. And we'll just keep going. So this one actually is gonna be, you can see this is a shorter one because we're getting two more blooms here. So I'm not gonna complain about that because that means more flowers. And I'll put this one in the smaller jar. I'm just gonna pop my extra leaves there on the ground and I'll clean those up after I'm done. So once you get on a roll here, you can just start grabbing them. One thing you wanna make sure you don't do is squeeze the main stem too hard because you can like cut off their system of getting water to the flower. So you wanna be pretty gentle there. I'm gonna go over here to this tall one. This is another bright red one. I think this is that, was that the Northern Lights variety that has the burgundy in it? I think so. Got an orange one here. So nice little uh, variety of, of colors. I'm gonna see if I can step back in here and grab this yellow one, grab this pink one, and again, like you can see, I'm always cutting right. Oh, did you see that cabbage moth fly off? They know me from last year, I think. Um, so just stepping in here, grabbing all the flowers. And like the seed package said, the more you cut, the more they bloom. So it's going to feel like, oh, I shouldn't take them all off. But all the blooms you see here, have grown back in just a few days since I last harvested. So again, you're gonna take your longer blooms and stick them in the deeper vase. That's probably a shorter bloom, I guess. And then your, um, your taller ones will go in the big vase. As soon as you get a group of these harvested, you do want to go ahead and get them indoors because just like other parts of your garden harvest, they're not gonna last long in the heat without, oh, see, I kind of messed up on this one. So you can see here, this is actually a new shoot that was coming with a new bloom. So that's a bummer. I should have harvested higher up on the plant. So take your time when you're cutting and make sure, because the last thing you wanna do is lose one of your pretty little blooms. Now zinnias, I like to say, are one of the easiest flowers to grow in a pollinator garden. It's one of the, I think the very first summer I grew my garden, um, I tell this story that the first, one of the first things I had successes with was growing zinnias. So that first year we had beans, basil, and zinnias, and I had a ton of zinnias. Um, it was so encouraging. So if you're looking for something to grow, uh, in your garden that will be a, like a for sure zinnias are it because you can start them from seed um, Can I lean over here and grab these pink ones? So this is one of an extra tall bloom, which I think is so pretty These have just started to really take off and again I'm going to cut right at that node so that I get some more blooms right afterwards so I'm going to cut these pink ones and this peachy one I love though it is tiny Cut this red one. And I think we're just about there. There may be a few more back here. We're gonna do these pink ones. So from one plant, as you start to harvest, you can end up getting, you know, dozens really of blooms off of one plant. You can see this pink plant. This is just one plant and it's splitting and splitting again. So from this one plant, we're ending up getting, you know, multiple, multiple blooms uh, because we, every time you harvest like that, 
what you end up doing is splitting the branch. So it splits and splits and splits and splits again. Um, so you just end up with loads of flowers, which I think is the best. So I'm almost done. As you can see, I'm a little addicted to running around and cutting flowers. Um, but I think we've just about done it. So small, big, everything in between. You could put all these together in one arrangement, mix them in with some other flowers too, or you could separate them out. Maybe put a few of your small flowers in a little kid's bathroom or um, on your windowsill or something like that, and then put the bigger ones in an arrangement on the kitchen table. So all I gotta do now is strip the rest of these leaves. I'll do a little snip on the edge of the stem before I put it in the water. And then I'll change the water over every few days just to keep it fresh and to make sure the blooms last as long as possible. So that's about it. These are the flowers that I can cut and pull from my pollinator garden from just a few seed packages in a pretty small space again and again. So from the growing season, probably for at least uh, two months, probably six to eight weeks, you can cut zinnias like this from your pollinator garden weekly. So super fun investment, super fun way to use the garden, feed the bees and butterflies, and just have some beautiful flowers in your life. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't taken the Green Thumb Quiz yet, what are you waiting for? Check it out at Gardinary.com slash quiz. We'll ask you just a few questions and then give you some free resources to help you grow to the next level, depending on what green thumb you have already. Thanks again for watching the Gardinary channel. I'll see you next time.